So you're already curious about the RTX 6090? The recently launched RTX 5090, based on Blackwell, has set a new power-hungry benchmark. But what comes next? Today, we're looking beyond Blackwell to the next architecture, codenamed Rubin, to speculate on what the GeForce RTX 6090 might bring to our desktops. To get a glimpse of the future, let's dive in. So to start, let's ground ourselves with the current one, the RTX 5090. Built on the Blackwell architecture using a custom TSMC 4 nanometer process, it's an absolute monster of a GPU, packing over 21,000 CUDA cores and 32 gigabytes of fast GDDR7 memory. Its main selling point is delivering a big performance uplift over the 4090, especially with features like DLSS4, Gamers Nexus found 27-35% to performance uplift in 4K gaming over the RTX 4090. But this performance comes at a steep cost. The card has a massive 575 watt TDP, requiring at least a 1000 watt power supply, and a price tag of two freaking thousand dollars. The team at Hot Hardware put it well, noting that when you compare it to the previous generation at similar settings, the 5090 is only about 25% to 40% faster and consumes more power than the 4090. This really sets the stage for what we need from the next generation. Not just more raw power, but smarter, more efficient power. Building on that, when we look toward the RTX 6090, the biggest change will be the underlying architecture, which we expect to be based on the the Vera Rubin designs NVIDIA has roadmapped for its data centers, has roadmapped for its data centers. The first major leap will likely be the manufacturing process. While Blackwell uses a custom 4 nanometer node from TSMC, Rubin is expected to jump to a 3 nanometer or even a 2 nanometer class process. In simple terms, this allows for more transistors to be packed into the same space, which is the fundamental key to boosting both performance and energy efficiency. This could also be the generation where we finally see a chiplet or multi-chip module design in a consumer flagship card. The data center Rubin chips already use a multi-die approach, and bringing that to GeForce could allow NVIDIA to create a much larger, more powerful GPU than what's possible on a single piece of silicon today. This would be a fundamental shift from the monolithic designs we've seen so far, enabling a massive increase in core counts for specialized tasks like ray tracing and AI processing. This brings us to the most exciting part of the speculation, the expanding role of AI. The RTX 6090 will be about much more than just a better version of DLSS. We're talking about the GPU evolving into a true coprocessor for generating parts of the game world in real time. NVIDIA's research into physical AI, generative world models, and projects like NVIDIA Cosmos points to a future where game physics, NPC intelligence, and even environmental details are handled by AI on the GPU. A key enabler for this could be the introduction of new, lower precision math formats like FP4 to the consumer cards. These formats, already present in Blackwell data center chips, are incredibly efficient for AI inference tasks. This could allow an RTX 6090 to run complex physics simulations or generate unique NPC dialogue and animations on the fly without bogging down the CPU. We could see game worlds that are not just more realistic, but truly dynamic and responsive in ways that simply aren't possible with today's pre-scripted logic. Now, leading directly into what this all means for actual gameplay. The ultimate goal for the RTX 6090 has to be making full, real-time path tracing the default standard for high-end gaming. Path tracing, which simulates light physics for an entire scene to produce incredibly realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections, is the holy grail of graphics, but it's incredibly demanding. With the 5090, it's still an optional, performance-heavy mode that relies heavily on upscaling. The architectural and AI advancements in the 6090s should provide the raw horsepower needed to run fully path-traced games at high resolutions and frame rates without compromise. This would be a huge win for developers, as many have noted that designing a game around path tracing is actually simpler and can reduce development time and even game install sizes by eliminating the need for pre-calculating and storing baked lighting data. 
Furthermore, a major design focus for the Rubin data center architecture is reportedly lowering power consumption. After the 575 watt 5090, a more efficient 6090 would be a massive and welcome strength. Of course, this exciting potential comes with some very real-world restrictions. The primary strength of the RTX 6090 will be its potential to deliver a true generational leap in visual fidelity, making fully dynamic, path-traced worlds a mainstream reality for high-end PC gamers. It represents a shift from simply rendering games to actively generating parts of them. However, the biggest restriction will undoubtedly be price. With the 5090 already at a $2,000 MSRP, it's realistic to expect the 6090 to push even higher, possibly into the 2500 territory, especially if it incorporates a more complex multi-chip design. Power draw, even with a focus on efficiency, will likely remain extremely high for the flagship model, continuing to push the limits of power supplies and case cooling. Finally, the increasing power of the GPU will continue to expose the CPU as a major bottleneck in many gaming systems, which means users will need a well-balanced, high-end system to get the most out of the card. The RTX 6090 won't just be about more frames. It's poised to be about fundamentally changing how games are made and played, with full path tracing and generative AI at its core. But will the performance leap be enough to justify the inevitable price and power demands? What do you want to see from the 60 series? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to get more videos like this.